I'm Kimberly with the Fat Quarter Shop, and we are delighted to have Angela Yostin today in the Fat Quarter Shop studio. Welcome, Angela. Thank you. We're here today to talk about Angela's new collection, Flats. So this is a new collection by Moda Fabrics. Right. And it's available in stores in May, May. 2013. So tell me about the original, how you came up with the idea for Flats. Well, back in 2009, my daughter was probably about three years old. Um, she was playing with some paper dolls and magnetic dolls and you know, all the different cardboard ball dolls. And uh, her brother is a year younger than her, and he was two at the time. And while she was playing with them, he kept taking the heads off. And so she would come scream to me and, Mommy, the head's falling off. You know, I had to fix it. I had to figure out a way to make it better. So we taped the heads back on. Again, they still kept coming off. <laughs> The boys, they just like those heads coming off for some reason. Um, so then I was turning to fabric, trying to figure out how can I make a paper doll out of fabric that wouldn't come apart yep. or tear apart or, you know, whatever. So that's how Flats began. And at, in 2009, we also started the Moda Bake Shop uh, website with free tutorials on how to use pre-cuts. So I originally started with a tutorial on how to make the little dolls. This is the boy doll. And I used a layer cake. And here's the girl doll. And there's Velcro, the female side of the Velcro, the loop side um, for her underwear. And then he also has the Velcro for his underwear and the socks. And so that that's how that part started and then the clothes you know obviously they have to have a large wardrobe so we I came up with a bunch of different clothing that you can mix and match to put on your dolls so they are fully clothed and <laughs> and that was I remember that coming out and I remember it being very popular yeah at the time, so yeah it went over really well and so it stayed up on the Moda Bake Shop for a while and uh, I kept having more and more ideas on this would be so cool printed in fabric. So since I worked for Moda, I contacted the design director and presented my idea to her about printing the flats onto fabric and tw so that way kids, you know, tweens, grandmas, aunts, mothers could all make little flat dolls without having to uh, sketch out the doll or trace the doll from the template and um, it's already all printed and outlined yeah, so we've and got, marked with Velcro. Yes, yeah, so we've got, she's got two panels. One is the set of dolls and one is a set of clothes. And then she's got a second set of clothes. And a second set of dolls, so you have a huge variety in the doll color, the hair color, the clothes color, the shoes color. So you, you know, your kids will have a ton of fun with this. So Angela's going to show us today how to make these dolls. So let's talk, Angela, about what are the supplies that the consumer will need to make this. Obviously, they'll need two panels, at least one doll panel, and at least one clothing panel. Right. We've got pins. Um, you'll also need some fusible fleece or by Annie's Soft and Stable, which is really great material because it helps them stand up. Yeah, the so pelon, that's this is the pelon. fusible fleece, and then this yeah. is the by Annie's Soft and Stable, so their heads stay up. Um, and then you'll also need the Velcro and scissors, and then thread, and there's a coordinating thread pack. Yeah, Angela's got a coordinating flat thread box and it's awesome. It's R-fill so it blends in. It's perfect. Like when she sews you'll see that the red perfectly matches the red on the outfit. So everything matches perfectly so when you make the dolls you'll hardly even see the stitching in these. These are so cute. <laughs> and everyone loves r -fill, so that's great. Obviously you need scissors and we mm -hmm. have some little buttons for accessories like yes. if you want to add little buttons to the, um, to the clothing. So we're going to show you next how we're going to make these dolls. So Angela, tell me tell me how we do this. Okay, so first we're going to take, there's instructions on the 
left side, or I guess if you're facing it, it's your right side, um, on the side of each of the panels that help you go through what to do on each step. But I'm actually, and on the instructions it says fusible fleece, but we're going to use the soft and stable because it's much sturdier and with the dolls it works great. So what I'm going to do is just slip the soft and stable underneath the doll and I want to line it up just on one of the sides. You don't have to do it on both, just on one of the dolls. So I've got my soft and stable everywhere where the doll is. I'm going to grab my scissors and just start cutting between on both. Um, and do you need to use pins for this step? You can, or if you, you know, are more comfortable without the pins, it's really up to you. And I'm going to go ahead and trim away the sides so I can move. I'm going to just trim my little girl out. And each panel has two girls on the top and two girls on the boy. One panel is a darker skinned child and then the other one is a paler skin. So you've got a lot of variety with whichever panel you choose. Yep. Yeah, I like to call them ginger and cream. <laughs> so I'm just going to, that way I have more movability, yes. Okay, so then I'll just start at one end and work my way around. And I'm cutting through both layers and just right along the black edge. Okay. The black outline. And it doesn't have to be exactly perfect because you're going to, use your coordinating thread along the edges to sew it together. So a lot of that white, if you get any white or black that's still in there, it'll get hidden from the Thread. threads. And you kind of have to bend underneath the arms. You just have to pull and bend it a little bit just so you can get that sharp corner. A nice sharp pair of scissors are key to this step. Yeah, and just as a reminder, on the dolls, we're going to use soft and stable, and when we do the clothing, we're going to use the fusible fleece. Fusible fleece. Okay. Mm -hmm. and in these little corners, actually, I like to just kind of skip through them, and then I'll come back with a smaller pair of scissors, just because the bigger scissors sometimes are harder to get in those little creases. Oh. Okay, so now as a reminder, what we did was we cut the back of the doll with the soft and stable attached. We went ahead and cut the front of the doll with no, nothing attached to the back. And as a reminder, this is how the panel started. So we cut this, added soft and stable, then we cut this one without, and now we have two loose dolls. And Angela's going to show us the next step, which is attaching Velcro to the doll. Okay. You're going to use the soft side, the loop side of the Velcro. And I'm using one and a half inch wide Velcro. It okay. uh, makes it easier to put it across and mark where you want. Okay, so I'm going to put it right here on the dotted line. Okay. And when I lift, just kind of crease it down to the other dotted line so I can kind of get an idea of where I need to cut. So I'm just going to snip in, and you can use a pencil if you'd like, so you know where you're cutting to, and then I'm just going to cut this across, straight across there. And you're basically just making underwear out of Velcro so that it fits all the way across the doll. And I'm going to also just cut this straight across now that I know where my marker is for the the tube part, and I want to cut either end. Okay. You can just keep taking it away, putting it back, just to make sure that you have the right size of Velcro for each piece. And you're going to do this for every piece that's of her underwear, so her little straps, her tube top, and her underwear and socks. So now Angela has cut her Velcro, and again, she used the fuzzy side, and she 
cut the pieces to match where the dotted lines are on the panel and she just put Velcro on top of them. Angela is going to sew with her white Arthel flat matching thread that's 50 weight. She's going to sew down the Velcro onto the doll and that will be our next step. So what we're going to do next is sew the Velcro onto the body and I'm using my Janome Horizon Memory Craft 8900 QCP and I'm going to use my A foot and I'm just going to use a straight stitch and I'm going to probably do about an eighth of an inch just right along the edge just to hold it down and back stitch at every start. So. And you'll want to keep your needle down when you turn. I'm going to go one more stitch, so about an eighth of an inch. And you'll go around all the sides of the Velcro to hold it in place. And then you'll want to back stitch at the end again. And cut your thread. And then you'll continue on with the rest of the pieces until you've got all the pieces sewn on to each of the body pieces for the, the underwear. So now that once you've got all of the Velcro sewn on to your body, you're going to match your front and your back of your doll with the soft and stable or your fusible fleece in between the two pieces and pin it together. And just match all the piece, all the sides up. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to make sure your ears are met with your ears and if you've got some pieces showing out, it's okay like the middle, the soft and stable if it's poking out a little bit not to worry. Your threads will cover all of that up. It's a little bit of patience and a little bit of love. So all come together. So once you've got your doll pinned together, you're going to get your sewing machine all ready to go with the new thread. So I'm going to take my white thread out and use the tan colored Aurifil thread that matches the flats in the 50 weight and I'm going to load that into my machine. And if you don't have a bobbin already made with the same color, which I've already got one made, then you'll want to wind a bobbin to go along with that and change that out, out as well because you will see the thread on both sides. And on my Janome I have this nifty little threader that I just love that I just you don't have to worry about looking through that little tiny hole. Okay. I'm going to pull my bobbin thread through. And I'm going to set my stitch to a zigzag. And this, on the Janome, it's in utility, and then you just go to the zigzag stitch. Every machine's going to be a little bit different. So if you're on a different machine, you'll want to change your zigzag. Mine's set to about a 3 um, and 1.5 width. So the 3 is the width of it, and the 1.5 is the length of how far along the zigzag stitch. And you can adjust that to however whatever you want. Um, really, is there's no rules to that. It's just to your preference. 
And again, I'm just using the open toe foot for this. Gonna align my foot and start stitching. And what I'm doing with my zigzag is as I'm stitching, I'm letting the needle come on the outside of the the doll so that way it it kind of closes off the edge. But you want to make sure it's wide enough, the width of it is wide enough to catch all the pieces of your doll and you're going to stitch all the way around. And as you can see, the stitching, the zigzag, is on either side of the body as I'm going along. And you can always go back if you turn your doll over and notice that you missed a couple of places. That's the nice thing with the zigzag, it's very forgiving. You can just go back over it and nobody will ever know. So now Angela has sewn the doll and you can see the front and the back and this is really cute. This says my name is and so at this point your kid could put name the doll. Put the name of the doll in. And so we've got our Velcro ready and our Velcro is ready to put, you know, the hair, the clothes, the shoes, all of that. But we're going to do two segments now. We're going to talk about putting the hair on, which is different than putting the clothes on. So Angela, tell me about the next step. Okay, what we've done is cut, we've just picked out which hair we wanted to use for the doll. And so we decided to go with the little funky hair for the girl. And what you're going to do is just cut out that little section um, of the hair that you want to use and then iron fusible fleece on the back side of both of them before you cut them out. Then we cut them out so that way you've got your fusible fleece on the back side of both pieces. Okay, and if you've never used fusible fleece, tell the consumer how one side, the difference in the size of okay. fusible fleece. Fusible fleece, um, you can feel the um, texture of the fleece, one side's really soft and the other side has like little dots of glue on it. So you can kind of feel that texture on there. So the glue, the dots of glue are, is the side that you want to put on the wrong side of the fabric and then press it and then cut out the little pieces so that way your fusible fleece is exactly where your um, fabric is. So then we're just going to take each piece and just align the front. And then I'm going to take the back and put that on the back side so they match up together. But that way when you turn your doll around, you have a back side of the hair and the front side of the hair. And you're just going to stitch these together just like you did the rest of the doll. Just zigzag around the edges. And then if you wanted to get even more creative, you can use your 50 weight thread and sew little hair, Line. piece, hair lines in there mm -hmm. like this one where we just sewed the little lines in the hair just to give it a little bit more movement. Okay. Or you can hand stitch it with the 12 weight. The RFL thread comes in 12 weight and 50 weight thread. Okay. So you can hand stitch it if you prefer to do the little lines and details of the, the hair. Okay. And if you wanted to add even little embellishments onto the little baubles or the bows, you can do that as well. Okay. okay. So, so we're going to take that. On. So now we're back from sewing the hair on the doll and we sewed on the front and the back and we used the same zigzag stitch with black RFL matching thread. And now Angela, tell me about the next steps in making the dolls. Okay. The next step is after you get it all sewn together, then there's you can it's an optional step. You mm -hmm. can add faces to it if you want. I've included um, some little faces face examples on the panels, and you can simply just take some tracing paper, trace out the face, and then uh, transfer it with some um, graphite paper or whatever, and transfer it onto okay. the face, and then use the the 12 weight thread by Arafil in the flats coordinating thread um, to stitch on their face. Okay. Um, if you want to draw on your own face, you can do that too. It's really up to you. I like to actually leave my faces blank. Um, it just gives a little bit more of an imaginative play for the kids and they can imagine what their face is going to look like. So after you get done with your doll, 
We'll set that aside and you're going to actually start making the clothes that Velcro onto the bodies. And so we've got Velcro on one side and just the clothing on one side. We've got the embellishing thread stitching on one side as well. So this is the panel of the, of the clothes and we've got girl clothing and we also have boy clothing. And there's fronts and backs to every piece of clothing. They've got little shoes, you can mix and match them. A little place for where the Velcro goes. But after you get your panel, you'll want to put fusible fleece on the wrong side of it. So the fusible fleece looks like this and it's got little adhesive dots on one side and it's just soft on the other side. And I like to take a whole sheet of the fusible fleece and just iron the entire panel backed with the fusible fleece on the back side. So that every piece has a piece on Yep, it. every piece has fusible fleece and you can sit in car line or at a baseball practice, softball practice, whatever. If you're just sitting needing to do something with your hands and you don't have a quilt to bind, you can sit and cut out clothing and it's already got the, the fusible fleece stuck to it. So once you get those all cut out, move this aside. You cut out your pieces and they'll look something like this. Oops. Okay, you cut out your pieces and they look something like this. You've got your Velcro piece over here that you're gonna put Velcro in the front of the shirt. And so what we're gonna do is actually just add a little piece of Velcro. You can just get a one inch piece of Velcro or what I'm using here is one and a half inch piece and you can kind of see through the Velcro of where you need to cut or the shirt where you need to cut and just trim the Velcro to the size. You can leave it the, the size of the Velcro or what I like to do is just trim it down to that Velcro piece. So once you get your little Velcro piece all cut to size, then you're going to take it to the machine and sew just the Velcro onto the back side of the shirt and then we'll come back and sew the two pieces together. Okay, and you're going to use a straight stitch when you sew the Velcro on the back and then you're Correct. going to use a zigzag around like we've already done. Right. So this is an example of what it looks like when we're done and that's how you would use um, to make all of your clothing and just to recap tell us what kind of material you use on the doll versus the the clothing so I think that does make a difference. On the doll we use the soft and stable by Annie's um, the white just so it's light they have it in black as well but I like to use the white just so the black doesn't show through um, and then on the clothing and on the hair you use fusible fleece. And we also wanted to talk about Angela's new fabric and just to reiterate that this is a great collection. It's called Flats, it's by Moda, it's coming out in May 2013. And we wanted to let you know this is not just available in dolls. We've also, Moda of course has jelly rolls, charm packs, layer cakes, and bundles. And this is a great collection. I loved it when I saw it. I think it has a lot of Pottery Barn colors. Mm -hmm. And you can see this beautiful quilt that we made that works really good for a girl's room or a boy's room. And these are just some of the prints that are in her collection. So it's not just dolls. And then Angela's gonna tell us about other things she's made with her collection. Okay. On this, I don't like to waste any fabric, any scraps. So the instructions on the sides of the panels, I wanted to use something with that. So with the little flats bag that you can carry all your flats and clothing in, I just used that um, piece at the top and then put some fabric at the bottom. And this is a free project that's on my website. Okay, and you tell everybody your website. It's www.angelayoston.com and that free pattern is on there. It's just the flats bag. And so you carry all the paper dolls in their bag, right? Yes, yep. All the flats can fit. They actually fit perfectly in the bag. And so you can see it's the perfect height so they can just slip right in and all their clothing can go in and, and they can hang out too if they want to peek out. So. <laughs> okay, and tell us about this project. This is the Flats House. 
So when the children are carrying it, it just looks like a little house of a bag. But when they open it up, they have hours of playtime that they can play with their flats. And they fit perfect inside. And they can sit and chat for a while. And it's a lot of fun, but it also uses the Annie's, by Annie's Soft and Stable to keep that um, stiffness. stiffness in that. And then all of the coordinating prints from the collection. And where can customers find this free pattern? This free pattern is available on Moda's website at www.modafabrics.com and it's under the free pattern section of the website. And you can download it and print it off in an eight and a half by 11 sheets. Okay. So thank you, Angela, for visiting. It was great to see how to make these dolls. I can't wait to make them for my kids. Thank you so much. And make sure to check us out on our website at www.fatquartershop.com and check out Angela at angelayostin.com. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.